Kukiyomi, or Consider It, was released as a series of three games. After playing all three, we determined there was no difference in quality between them. Therefore, this review may apply to any and all of the three games in the series. Test your politeness, and maybe your patience, in Consider It. Are social conundrums simpler with a companion? The visual style of Considerate consists of very simple, standard doodles on a white background, with the occasional minimalist pixel images for some of the games. There's very little animation to speak of, generally just enough to suggest movement. The game is entirely black, white, and gray, except for red and blue indicating what each player is in control of. The screen is often free from clutter, which is necessary for ease in identifying puzzle solutions in the very short time period that each level gives you. But levels will occasionally give you more to look at, which means more to consider and more confusion when searching for that quick solution. Consider it combines sometimes realistic and sometimes exaggerated social situations with occasional straightforward microgames into a randomized series of levels. Any given level could take you between 5 and 30 seconds to complete. Activities range from having to match the walking speed of a date to something more complicated, like knowing where to stand when the doors open on a subway, and then to a simple game of jump rope. Almost every scenario will either require you to press the button at the right time, move something on the screen, or simply make a binary choice based on a given context. Oftentimes, it's not clear what you're supposed to do. Although the simple visual style mitigates the confusion a bit, with a short time to react and lack of clarity when it comes to the controls, we were scratching our heads on even the third or fourth attempt at some scenarios. The game points out that there's an emphasis on Japanese culture, which suggests that the solution to many of the puzzles relies on some knowledge of local customs. Some scenarios offer hints in the form of a text-based setup to the punchline that is the actual interactable part of the game, but if you're not familiar with the situation being referenced, you can only guess at the correct solution. Thankfully, experimentation is part of the fun, and not knowing what exactly your goal is can have hilarious results if you fail. But for many of the scenarios, all it takes is one failure to realize what you need to do next time, and without the challenge of discovery, the game becomes a series of leisurely activities. Looking at all three games, it's odd that there's no sense of progress in design. Although they each have some clever puzzles, there's nothing any more clever about the puzzles in the later games, or any difference in the challenge between the beginning or end of the games. The single-player campaign for each of the games is a gauntlet of 100 levels, and it may take you about 20 to 30 minutes to get through each of the games, although your progress is saved after each level, so you can play the campaign in bite-sized chunks. Keep in mind that many of the levels in single-player are binary choices that will take you only a few seconds to complete. Quite often you'll spend more time looking at the screen fade in or out than you will actually interacting. Within the campaign, there are some clever combinations of puzzles that occasionally link together to form an arc, such as a series of puzzles that involve activities while on a date, or participating in a wedding. But for the most part, the levels seem random, and will often repeat with very slight tweaks. So if 100 puzzles sounds like a lot, it really isn't. Even between the separate games, some of the puzzles are identical. Every 5 or 10 levels, you are given a very vague progress report, which is the only way to determine if you've done any of the puzzles correctly in the single player. Playing through the campaign unlocks a couple of other single player game modes, like a selection of micro games that you can now play on their own, and a new version of the campaign that asks you to intentionally fail every level. Co op is a separate, simplified game mode where two players work together to solve a randomized set of 10 mini games per playthrough, while the game scores them on a few vague criteria. It has much less variety than the single player mode, as it simply takes a handful of these levels and tweaks them to include a second player. Players share the same screen, and every level consists of a single screen with very limited interaction. Players are always working together, so there's no chance of one player carrying the slack of another. One of the biggest problems with Consider It is that the inclusion of single player has the potential to ruin the multiplayer. The solo is obviously the default mode, with a much more fleshed out campaign that unlocks other modes. But the best part of playing the game is discovering and learning new scenarios to hilariously fail or succeed. And that discovery is made much more fun with a friend. If one player has gone through the solo mode, then they've pretty much seen everything, and will know what to do in a lot of the co-op scenarios. The concept of the game fits perfectly as a shared experience, but that experience is limited by the emphasis on single player, and the small details that make multiplayer less accessible, such as being taken back to the main menu after every co-op playthrough, and the lack of replayable minigames. 
Adding insult to injury, the thumbnails for the games in digital stores inaccurately market them as co-op games. The co-op mode at least gives you an indication of whether you've completed a level successfully with a positive or negative chime after each. And on the first couple of playthroughs, some of the puzzles can be fun. Neither player is really prioritized, although it felt like players usually had the same role when playing through the same puzzle more than once. The puzzle selection is randomized, so you never know what combination of levels you'll get, but you will see everything the co-op mode has to offer in about three playthroughs. To make matters worse, even in the smaller mode there's overlap between the three games in the series, with no discernible improvement in variety. The game is great for short sessions of 10 minutes or less, but there's not much reason to come back to it after a few playthroughs. In the single player mode, there's a suggestion of some continuous threads that form a plot where some levels are obvious callbacks to previous levels. This continuity is pretty vague, but it was nice seeing some generic story linking a series of different puzzles, and the ending actually references some of the action of the levels, but this is definitely not a game to play for narrative. Consider it is fine. It's a fun activity for a few short play sessions, and is good for some laughs. The co-op gameplay actually works well for the most part, and showcases the potential for this genre as a cooperative experience. But there's so little multiplayer content, even between three iterations of the game, that it doesn't seem worth it. If you're interested in the rapid-fire micro-game genre, and don't mind games being very short, one-time experiences, this trilogy might be something to look at. But if you're most interested in playing with a friend, this is one, or three, we would not recommend.